location where Glaucus told you where this mine was. Mm -hmm. There's a wide open courtyard that looks like you're seeing the remnants of what was once piles of like quarries, so like little piles of stone and mm. areas where things were like being set aside. And, like an active mine, like where you were sorting. This is like the good ore. This is just remnants of that, but you can tell it's long since not active. It is dust filled, dust. overgrown. There's like sections of like gravel and rock where there's now shrubs uh, growing out of it. And in the center of it, cut right into the floor, you can see there's a part like that drops into like a pit, almost in the center of the ground of the area. No formal entrance, just a pit. Correct. You guys want me to go check it out? Yes, I do. I am going to sneak in and see what I can find in the pit thing. Make a stealth check. Oh boy. 21. Okay. Excellent. I'm rolling good on the checks. You pitter-patter, pitter-patter, making almost no sound. It's a wide open space so everyone can see you. Uh Uh-huh. But you're making no sound as you're walking right up to the section of this. And as you get close to the pit, you see that it doesn't go straight down. Uh It slopes and then appears to level off. Oh. It's like a a decline to get in, Uh and then it appears to level off and go down underground. I am going to go as far as I can no longer see, but I do have dark vision for 60 feet. Okay. It goes about five feet before the level off. Mm. And when you get down in there, you you can see rubble, piles of rotten wood. It is about 10 foot all the way around, 10 foot wide, 10 foot high. Okay. And you can see with your dark vision that it slopes very steadily downward. I don't hear or see or smell anything? Mm, no, you don't need a perception check. It's okay. Uh, you see the tunnel is... There's a lot of loose dust. Above you, there's halfway rotted out like wooden buttresses that were built to keep the tunnel open. But it looks like a man-made tunnel, not like... It's, a man, it's definitely made. a man-made tunnel. Okay. You see old uh, walked-over footprints, smaller footprints, maybe from kids that came in here and were playing in the mine. Kids, but not like beasts or animal or make an investigation adults. check. Uh, that's a four minus one. Nope. Okay, I don't want to go too far, but I still don't hear anything, right? I am going to quietly walk out, and I'm gonna go. Go, go, go. Okay. All of you hear Spot trying to make a sound like a bird. Cacao, cacao. Convincing. What did you say, Lorelai? Very convincing. Convincing, very convincing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Sarcastic. <laughs> All right, so I woke up to spot and said, what's wrong? Coast is clear. That's what the cacao meant. Coast is okay, clear. Okay, so we know that from now on. Okay. Yes. If I go, ah, that means no good. Ready? Okay. I think we should start heading in. Yeah. Let's go. Do you guys want me to go first? I saw some footprints, but I don't know what they are. It could have just been like random scurrying footprints. I don't know how right, old they are. Let's all go down there and have a look. Do you want me to let's try go. to go ahead of you guys or? You go ahead, I'll be behind you. Okay. Okay, so marching order. I'm gonna be behind Spot. Lorelai's gonna be all the way in the back. Okay. Spot, Eleanor, Lorelai in the back. Who's at three, four, and five? I'll be five. Okay. I'll do three. And Kara at four. All right. So you all see the same thing. As you come in, You, the, you it levels off and then goes into a steady decline of this old, dusty tunnel. You see piles of rubble here and there, rotted out cross beams and wooden buttresses that are that keep the, 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 the ceiling braced up. The tunnel goes in for maybe another 60 feet. And it ends at a roughly hewn chamber. You see old rusty picks, stacks of wooden planks, buckets of nails, just all different types of mining equipment. Very old, very rusted out, just scattered about this small chamber. There is a broken down minecart currently on its side. You also see three decomposing bodies here, all 
look very much like the creature that Lorelai and Spot that you ran into. We all see this or only I see it? Oh, no, all of you see it, but Lorelai and Spot are the ones that recognize it as being the same type of creature. Lorelai carefully goes over to investigate the decomposing bodies. Anything weird? What are you looking for? Um, I don't know, just uh, to see if they're still alive. Make sure they're still, like, actually dead. Make a medicine check. Eleanor? When she's done. Huh, two. Two? Yeah. Wounds. <laughs> <laughs> you see wounds. I see wounds. Yep. Do they look like, are they bleeding wounds? No. They're, the bodies are decomposing. So they're, any oh. blood is gone. Eleanor. I want to use um, Divine Sense. Okay. To see within 60 feet of us any celestials, any fiends, or any undead. Okay. All right. You got your phone on you? Yeah. And, I mean, within the same radius, you can also detect the presence of any place or object that has been any consecrated or, or desecrated. desecrated. Yeah. Okay. Divine Sense. Where we go? You know the type. I'll know the type, but not identity. But not its identity, and you know the location. Okay. Uh oh. Is this something that I can share with the rest of the party? That is completely up to you. Oh my. Okay. Do with that what you want. Keep that under wraps at this moment. It looks like know, Jolly Ranchers. With divine sense, you know the location of yeah. the, of what it is, so there's no doubt. It's. It's. A, I. I would not have any. Nope. I doubt that. Hundred percent. Like, Oh, it's not an intuition, it's a fact. Yep. Okay. Yep, I'll, I'm going to choose to keep that for a little while longer. Okay. For the sake of just adding a little drama and a little funsies to the group, Kara, Lilith, Lorelai, Spot, Morpheus, make perception checks. Nine. Plus one. No. Twelve. Okay. Fifteen. Okay. Seven. Okay. <laughs> Fifteen. Spot, Lilith, Morpheus. When Eleanor held her um, her holy symbol and centered herself to try and see what creatures might be in this mine, she did a very good job hiding it, but for a split second, her eyes leveled on Kara. You saw her eyes flash green. Yeah. And then she just collected herself and then moved on. Yeah. I have no idea what that means. Ah. Mm. Spot has no idea what that means. Well, DM... What, what shade of green did her eyes flash? Because they're really um, all the I'll tell you. What shade of green? What shade of green? That's a good one. But I will say like a seafoam green turning into emerald. That's what happens if I use my divine sense. Seafoam is usually when I'm marching or scouting. And emerald is when I start getting angry. Angry? Yeah. Mm. When I go into battle, it's like seaweed color. Mm. So that's not yet. So it just flickered between the sea foam and the emerald for okay. that split second. Okay. All right. I notice it, but I don't say anything. And then I'm going to say, okay, guys, you want me to keep going ahead? Yes. Let's go. Okay. I am going to keep scouting ahead, DM. Okay. You're going past the kobolds? Yeah. Well, you kind of have to because there's the chamber and it kind of ends at like a hammerhead type. Like if the, the tunnel that you came through would be the... the the handle. Yeah. This chamber is like sort of a hammerhead shape. Okay. And right at the right side is where the cobalt and the mine the cobalt and the mine cart are. So you've got to step over the cobalt bodies to go in deeper into the into the mine. Okay. That's okay. What so I you're do. scouting ahead. Uh huh. Okay. As you go to step over the cobalts, mm -hmm. you step in between them, in between two of them, and you feel a squish, <laughs> and you look down. And there's this oozy, blobby kind of thing on on the bottom of your foot that seemed to have been underneath the cobalts. Ew. And when you kind of collect yourself, that is when, according to the marching order, the minecart flips back up right side, splits in half, and you see a large mouth and maw open oh, up, Jesus. and it goes to attack Eleanor. Hi. Everyone roll initiative. Oh. Wait, I'm sorry. Is that a mimic? A yep. mine car? <laughs> the, the mine car. Mimic. A little car that rides. 
Yeah, real oh, thing. It's it, a mimic. It was pretending to be a mine car. It's actually a beast. Oh, it's a beast. Oh, okay. Monstrosity, technically, but I, I don't. I picked it just looks like a big mouse. A mimic can what look like hell? anything, so it mimicked oh. a, a mine cart. Oh, fuck. So. Lorelai, what's your initiative? Six. Oh, good. Six. Eleanor. Eleven. Uh, Morpheus. Twenty. Spot. Seventeen. Lilith. Seventeen. Guessing Spot has better decks. And Kara, what's your initiative? Six. I'm going to guess Lorelai has better. Actually, I'm not sure. Lorelai, what's your deck score? Uh, 14. Kara, what's your deck score? 12. 12. Okay, so Lorelai goes before you. Okay. Oh, of course. So, first. all right. Going first. Morpheus leading us off. I'm going to take a dodge to get into a defensive oh. position. Excuse me. Okay. And, and I'm going to inbound my uh, crossbow to Crimson Ray. And that's a that's a bonus action, right? Okay, yeah. Doing the doing it. That, yes. that, that, okay, I, I I forget. No, no, not a problem. Okay, so you're gonna take the dodge action, right? And as a bonus action, you're gonna put the crimson right onto your hand crossbow, right? Just to get into defense. Okay, so you all see Morpheus take this defensive position, I and down my crossbow, I cut my arm. Okay, he takes one of his crossbow bolts, and you see him cut himself, and the blood lines like the the the. Tr- the, the, the firing mechanism of the crossbow. You roll for that, don't you, just to see Yes. That. Four. So it's a D4, and you will lose... One. One. So you lose one hit point. Right. And your crossbow now does extra damage, right? Yes. And what kind of damage is it? What, what right did you take? The storm. So lightning. Lightning, Lightning, yes. okay. So when Morpheus does that, the crossbow seems to absorb his blood, and then there's a faint of electrical energy that goes across it. Wow. So, all right, you are dodging. Remind now me I'm of I'm dodging. That. I'm in a defense position now. Excellent. Underutilized action. People don't dodge enough. Okay. Eleanor, you're up. Oh, uh, wait. Did no, I say I'm six. I'm second. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going off of that. Uh, Spot, you're up. Okay. How far away am I? From what? The mimic. The mimic. Five feet, but it's lunging at Eleanor behind you. But you're still in that five feet. Oh. Sort of radius. I am going to do a quick spinny kick, and with the because my I don't wear shoes, right? So on my cat's foot, it's all slimy and stuff, and mm-hmm. I'm gonna try to kick it and try to also fling the stuff off of it at the same time. Fifteen. Fifteen. Fifteen will hit That's the mimic. Right. All right. Woo-hoo. You do not fling the thing. You kind of like, whack. but it, the, whatever that is is still down there, and you are able to kick the mimic. Cool. D. You kick you the mine cart. Do- do you want me to do both of my t- attacks now? Yep. No, that's only a 10. Okay, so the second attack misses. Okay. 1d4. So Six damage. And then while I'm standing there, I'm going to take out my pipe. Okay. When you kick it, it takes the damage, but your foot sticks to it. So it's like... With the sticky, it's stuck to you it? You miss that first kick, and then you come back for the, for a side kick to hit it. And you do damage, but... No, it's just the sticky thing you pulled off of. It seems like the mimic itself has adhered to you. And you... And now Spot is there, stuck to this thing. Oh, jeez. I'm hopping on one leg like a freaking idiot. Yeah, you got three... Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> is that your turn, Spot? Yeah, I'm gonna take out my pipe. I'm gonna batter up. <laughs> oh, want to play rough, huh? No, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Lilith, awesome. Rough. <laughs> okay, I think it kind of changes. So, I mean, it's touching spot, right? So, if I was to do something like shocking grasp, it would also hurt spot. No. Oh, okay. No. So I would. I am behind Eleanor. So how I'm like within five feet of it, right? Yeah. Okay. It's it. It's not technically made of metal, right? Because it's... No. No, it's not made okay, of metal. Okay, got it. All right. So then you know what? Then I'm not going to do that. I'm going right. to um, fire bolt. Okay. Already? Okay. Fireball! So I'm only going to add five right now because I still... My wand is not yet working, right? You have to short rest with it, okay. yeah. Okay, so 16. 16 hits. Okay. And that's one, two, three. Nine. Okay. And what did you use? Firebolt. You technically would have been at disadvantage to hit because it's a ranged attack. 
from my melee range. I'll let you either use that for shocking grasp damage, okay. or you can roll again, and we'll take the lower number. Your call. Uh, shocking grasp is a D8, so sh- I'll just roll a D8. Okay, we'll just say that we're okay. shocking grasp. Sure. Okay. If it's shit, okay. we'll like average them together. It's five. Five. That's okay, bad. that's fine. That's fine. Got damage. Um, that is five electrical damage, and you reach out and you grab this thing. <laughs> yeah. And you go to step back. But my hand. And now your hand there. is stuck to it. You son of a bitch. Wow. Fourth, the mimic. Dude. It was going to bite you, Eleanor. Mm-hmm. So we'll just continue with that action. I think a ten misses you. Seventeen. Yep. So it reaches up to bite you, and you just whoa! You snap. And you just kind of like push it to the side, drawing okay. a great sword. Fifth. That's the fifth. Mm-hmm. Oh dear. So spot. <laughs> okay. You pull out your pipe, and over your shoulder, that jelly thing that you stepped on oh, yeah. begins moving its way across the floor. See, see, everybody, just to let you know, he let it slip because I said, How far away am I? And he said, From what? <laughs> and I said, Ah, in my head, oh, there's more than one thing in the room. You went, ah, ha, ah, ha, ah, ha. Where is the spoon? What do you know from Sneaky, you best? <laughs> <laughs> and now this thing makes its way up and begins crawling up Spot's leg. My, my, oh. my little, like, standing leg? Oh, now I'm that's mad. A, that's a five to hit, though, so it just... <laughs> you just kind of shrug Bastard. that off. <laughs> okay. Uh, Sixth position. Be me. Eleanor. Yay. All right, I'll do the Divine Smite. Well, you have attach. to roll. You have to. You have to attack first. Oh, I thought I had a call. You don't. You don't have to call it until you've hit. You can attack, and when you hit, you can choose to smite. Oh, oh okay. Eleven. Yeah, Eleven will just miss. Ah. Oh. You're swinging at the minecart, right? Or the mimic? Yeah, the mimic. Eleven will just miss. Just miss. Okay. You added your modifier, right? Plus five. Oh, then sixteen. Sixteen hits. Okay. Now I'm gonna do divine smite. Roll 2d6s for your greatsword. Right. And 2d8s for your divine sword. Yep. Okay. And then 2d8s. Uh, you rolled, uh, you know, you got great weapon fighting, right? Yeah, that's... You can re-roll no, wait. those. Do I? Re-roll. Re-roll, re-roll one, two, Okay. Six. Much Here you go. Okay, that's... 2d6, that's 8 plus 3, that's 11. Right there. Okay. The 2. And now the radiant damage. Those you six. cannot re-roll. Okay, so that's six. Six, so that's eleven, that's seventeen. 17. Eleanor draws her greatsword, and she cuts this thing right across the side of its big maw. And when she hits, you see a glowing burst of radiant light from her greatsword as it singes the side of this thing. And it kind of looks like the, the shark from Jaws 2, where like half of the face is burned <laughs> from, the, from the, uh, the, the power line. Yeah. And that's sort of what, what this thing looks like now. Okay. Well done there, Eleanor. All right. Uh, seven, seven, seven. Lorelai! I am going to Eldridge Blast it because I'm a warlock. You do that. Okay, then. Oh, real, real quick, Lorelai, hold the number. I'm sorry, I forgot one thing with, with Eleanor. Uh-huh. You hit, and you cut it, and there's that burst of energy, and you go to pull your sword out. And I'm stuck. And the sword is stuck to it. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Lorelai, what was your attack? Actually, I'm sorry. I wanted to move back a little bit. Is there any sort of cover that I could get? Yes, you can kind of sneak back behind that original tunnel you walked in and sort of do, like, the strafing side shot. Yes. Okay. I'd like to do that. So I'm going to do that, and my I rolled a 20. Natural 20. Yeah. All right. 2d10s, girl. Do I add my agonizing blast to each d10 or just once? No, you just add that once. Okay. 11, 12. Oh, wait, hold on. I was wrong. It's actually 14. Okay. The force blast comes from your hand, slams into the side of this thing, shaking Lilith, Eleanor, and Spot a little bit. Um, this thing's starting to look pretty rough. Good. It doesn't shake them to the point where they could get free, though? Not quite. <laughs> All right. Kara. Can I? Use the sacred flame to hit him. I mean, it, it already hit. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, well, that's sure. what I. Yeah, I don't want to hit them. Okay. But I want to hit. So you him. want a sacred flame, the mimic. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Okay, that will be a dexterity saving throw for him. That is a 15. He makes the save. Wow. I got a death stare. You did. Any bonus action? Uh, yes. Bonus action, I'll do... No. All right. Kara, let's go. This thing is somehow able to just sort of boom, boom, boom and get out of the way of your sacred flame. It's your turn. Top of the order, Morpheus. All right, I'm going to fire the crimson right. Okay. I got the crossbow. <laughs> you're kind of, you're a little worried. You don't want to hit your teammates, right. and you're just sort of looking for that perfect shot and just shoot right over the head of the mimic. Okay. Any, uh, that, that's your turn? Yeah, that'll be my turn. Okay. Spot. So I have this thing crawling up my leg, but I also am stuck. Mm hmm. You are considered grappled. So I have options here. My one option is to ungrapple myself mm -hmm. with a successful strength check, I'm guessing. Yes. Or, all right, I'm going to take the stick, and instead of hitting my the, the thing that's got my foot, mm -hmm. the goopy thing that's going to start crawling up my leg, I'm going to whack it. Okay, roll on attack. 13? 13 will hit. Okay, thank God, because I'm going to break my own freaking knee. Okay, so that will hit. So that is 1d6. And now, to offhand attack, can I land on my knee and try to mm, squish it and also keep my foot in the mimic? Sure! Now, the, the, me the thing you hit it with... It's my blowpipe. My gaffer's blowpipe. What's it made of? Uh, metal. Oh. Does that have to be... Oh, it's not silver, if that helps you. Okay, just needed to know. Probably like a lead pipe. How much damage did, did you do? Uh, seven damage total. Okay. With the, with the pipe. Landing on it, 15 plus five, so 20 to hit. Hits. And that is just a d4 from me squishing it. Four more damage. Okay. Does it look like it took the damage? It took the damage, and when you, after you sit down and you look at it, you notice that there's a little bit of puck marks up and down the pipe. Almost as if it got sprayed with acid. Is my leg burning? Your leg is not burning, but it looks like it has some sort of corrosive attributes when metal touches it. I say, I stepped in it, but this is not my fault. And don't get sucked in. <laughs> Third position, Lilith. If I am grappled, I would need to use an action to break free. But if I'm not trying to break free, can I use my action to cast? Yes, okay. absolutely. So am I able to cast Burning Hands if I have a hand on it? Yeah. Because it is self, right? Yep. Okay, yep. all right. So I'm going to position where my 15-foot cone isn't going to hit. The sure. other people, yeah. like, <laughs> stuck to it. Yeah. yeah. And, um, okay, so it's a deck save. You can hit me. Because you're stuck to him, I'm going to give him disadvantage. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a nine. Okay. Ooh, that's a 16. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Nice. He had 14 left. Ooh. So, so Lilith just kind of is like, fuck this shit. And she just sits, gets herself to the side where she's out of the way of Spot and Eleanor. And you just see this burst of fire come out of uh, Lilith's hands. And this thing just... Begins to sort of melt, Ooh. like a candle. Excellent. But I still have the thing on my foot. The right? thing on your foot is still very much there. Yes. I'm gonna. I'm now trying to like push it off my leg with my hands. Okay. And I'm gonna say, Eleanor, stay back. Okay. We're still in initiative. You're still though, in right? initiative. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You are still in initiative. This thing is gonna jump up back at you because you're right on it. Oh. Okay. So it's jumping back at you, spot. Oh, for as a sake. as a piece of it that you're not kneeling on goes and comes flying right up at your face. Fifteen. To hit. Oh wait, hold on. I was looking at the mimic. Thirteen. Misses. You see it coming. You and you just dodge dodge your head to the side. I feel like I'm currently on the floor, rolling around like a little. <laughs> yes. Okay. If you have a ball of yarn, attack me. I'm gonna be really pissed off. I'm just gonna say. <laughs> Eleanor. Okay, so my sword is still stuck on Mimic. The Mimic is dead. The Mimic's dead. The Mimic's Mimic dead. Mimic is dead. You're free, Lilith's free, Spot's free. It's the gel. It's this oily, blobby thing that seems to be attacking Spot. 
And Spot did put it, put his hand up and say, stay back. Well, what can I try to... I'm so proud of yourself. Yeah, what kind of sick DM would have a character made of metal and give you something that corrodes metal to fight? <laughs> Sorry. Your turn. <laughs> I should try and stay away from it. Hmm. Everyone's... <laughs> Everyone's what, cranky? Just a little snarky today. <laughs> <laughs> no, just because you're like, are you waiting for an answer? <laughs> like, it's it's, like it's the warm weather. Sarcastic. It's yeah. the warm weather. Wait till we hit July and August. Just yeah. It's your fucking turn. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Jack off! There's really not much I can do. I'll ask Spot. You pushed me away. Do you, are you sure? I can't answer, right? I'll give you a quick answer. Did you say, are you sure? Is that what you said? Yeah. I'm going to say, yup! And she shows you her corroded metal pipe that she hit it with. But still on her leg. I, I, it's uh... like all over me now. Okay. Oh. Beware of the blob. Send me It was all over the place. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I'm thinking. Well, if it's, oh, where is it? Like on her leg? She's like kneeling on it and it's, you can't really see like, it's sort of just this mobile, like, it's like an, a pool of oil that can move. It's sort of what it looks but like. But is it on her like that? It's on her leg. Come it on. was What's trying it? to, like, jump oh, in her okay. face. So it's still right. His on face. Your leg. You can't see her. His face. I'm going to ignore the spot's warning, and I'll just try and see if I can. Okay. Roll an attack. See if I can. It's like the pink ooze from um, Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters, too. 19. Yeah, 19 hits. Okay. Roll your damage. What did you hit it with? Great sword. My great sword. I know. I just take a shot at it. She's ignoring me. This is what happens when you have a character who lies all the time. Yeah. <laughs> he thinks he's awesome. What are you doing? 13. 13? He had 11 left. Ha <laughs> ha! Great. As Eleanor hesitates. Yep. But then eventually she moves in. Nudges you a little bit out of the way, Spike, and drives her greatsword right through the center Excellent. of this thing, and you see its form just sort of break apart. Okay. And when you pull your sword out, you see that the tip of it now has that corrosion to it as well. Uh, your weapons now have a minus one to damage. Oh my okay, so god, I am angry. So instead of plus three, it'll be just plus, it's plus two. two. Yep. Okay. Until we're out of there and I can get it repaired. Get it repaired or get a new great sword. Yeah. Right. Okay. And on the other side of this, now that you're getting your bearing spot, you notice there's another opening that looks like it goes down further into some sort of mine shaft. Before we go forward, and I go over and I show Eleanor my blowpipe, which is like all damaged, and I say, "This is why I told you not to come. I would have done it. You didn't have to do it." No. It's my duty that I have to help. Look at my sword. Look. It took some damage, too. But you could have gotten a lot of damage. You don't worry about that. Lorelai, she overhears a conversation between Spot and Eleanor, and she goes over to Spot and is, uh, says, when are you going to realize you're not by yourself anymore? Spot wipes away a tear. Oh, no, I didn't mean for it to be sappy. Okay, and she walks back away. But then he takes his his pipe and he like puts it away because he doesn't want to yeah. damage it anymore. And then he's gonna walk. You with the boohoo's, you bitch! Is this your character? Or is this mom? This is good, baby. It's character mom. I, know. <laughs> I wasn't serious. Okay. And he will walk away, and he'll uh, he's gonna now cross. Where he was in the first place. Okay, you're heading toward that mine shaft. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, um I have dark vision up to 120 feet. Okay. And um, I have I'm proficient in perception checks, so I'm I'm not gonna hang back this time. I want to go like up front, like with her, because I think I might have a better chance of spotting something than this. All thing. right. Okay. okay. You do have 10 feet of room, so you can go two by two. Yeah. Spot and Lilith. Uh, then I guess Eleanor and Morpheus? Yeah. Unless anybody has any issues, and we'll say Kara and Lorelai. Okay. Okay, and you're going to progress toward that mineshaft. Yep. So I think we'll take a...